Oh my gosh, look at this clutch right here. And the moment of truth. And there it is, guys, the waterfall. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog, and wow, what a beautiful morning. And I tell you what, the incubator is emptying up really quick because all of these snakes hatched within the last couple days. I mean, just take a look at all of these eggs. I mean, all of these guys right here. And this is a really super exciting clutch. This is actually a pastel crystal bred to a pinstripe spark. Oh my gosh, can I wait till those babies hatch out? Again, it's going crazy. It was like an explosion in the incubator over the last couple days. Look at all these genetic stripes right here. Who doggy? There is some beautiful snakes. And this clutch is super exciting. This is actually a fire red striped yellow belly bred to a super vanilla. Oh my God, I cannot wait. As a matter of fact, we might cut those eggs tomorrow. Let me know if you guys want to do it. But I tell you what is crazy in this incubator. Look, we've got some ivories and pastel ivories and yellow bellies and oh my gosh. You know what? I'm just going to pack up all the stuff that hatched out all these snakes. We'll head over to the shop and we'll take a look. Oh, and let's go ahead and check up on Lucy's eggs really quick. Of course, this is just one box of them. No babies yet, but they are coming soon. So before I get over to the Reptarium, because trust me, we have a lot of work every single day until we open, I do want to just power through some of these babies that hatched. We had a lot of baby ball pythons hatched today, so I'm going to do my best to just kind of highlight the best ones to kind of show you, and then I'm going to move on to the next thing. This was an absolutely stunning animal right here. This was actually from a super pastel vanilla to a pinstripe. So theoretically, this should be a lemon blast vanilla vanilla, but it looks crazy cool. This was the one that I cut the other day, so wow, that turned out great. And yes, by the way, my hands are absolutely filthy. This is after two showers and washing up like crazy. That stuff gets all over you, and uh, that's what happens when you work. So I don't want any complaints from you guys about how dirty my hands are, because I've done the absolute best I could do. Let's move on to the next clutch here. Ooh, doggy, look at these suckers here. Oh my gosh, look at that one here. Ooh, and look, at there's another one here too. Oh my gosh, look at how gorgeous these two are right here. Oh my gosh. And of course, these are actually pastel het russo spider pinstripes. Oh my gosh. Those things are gorgeous. And there's a whole bunch of other gorgeous animals in here too. This would actually just be a spider het russo. You can see how wild that animal looks. Just that het russo blood just changes everything up. Next up, this was actually a beautiful clutch too. This is a dragonfly bred to just a normal that's actually het for caramel albino. But look at some of these babies right here. Oh my gosh. This this, again, should just be a firefly, basically, a fire in a pastel, but that is definitely something different. And that's one of the things that's so awesome when you're hatching lots and lots of snakes, is you hatch stuff out that are just anomalies, and you wonder, like, what the heck is this? And then you can actually breed it out and figure it out. Like, look at this, this is another one. This should be a dragonfly. That is no normal dragonfly right there. I don't know what it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, what's interesting about this clutch right here, all the different patterns in here. Again, something really wacky and something that I wouldn't expect from that particular breeding. These next ones are absolutely beautiful here. These are actually mimosas. And this one right here is actually a pastel mimosa. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely beautiful. And again, that is a ghost and a champagne. Of course, that's a pastel ghost champagne. And I tell you, every time I look at my hands, guys, I know you guys are probably looking at those snakes going oh my gosh trust me this is washed this is not like these aren't filthy i'm not touching the snakes with filthy hands but even i'm looking and going oh my gosh and i'm cringing a little bit so bear with me guys so one day my hands will come back to a normal color It'll probably be a month or two so when you guys come visit me at the reptarium you'll probably see me all dirty and stuff like that but that's all part of it this was actually a red stripe yellow belly bred to a spider and what's interesting about this it doesn't look like we hit any yellow bellies at all but we did hit some red stripes spiders. This would be a red striped spider right here. This would also be a red striped spider right here. And you can tell it just kind of switches up the pattern a little bit. And, oh, and as a matter of fact, this is a red striped spider as well. Wow. Now this is the only normal spider that we got out of this clutch. So it was really good. We ended up getting three red striped spiders, a normal and a normal spider. No red stripes and no yellow bellies in the whole clutch, which is a little bit strange, but hey, that's just the way snake odds go. Oh my gosh. Look at this clutch right here. This is actually a pewter cycle cypress male, which is a pastel cinnamon and cypress, bred to a pinstripe. And these are the crown jewels right here. <laughs> Doggy, these things are amazing. These would actually be pewter pinstripe cypress ball pythons. So that's a pastel, it's a cinnamon, it's a pinstripe, and it's a cypress ball python. That's what I was looking for. That 
is all of those jeans combined. Oh my gosh, there's some beautiful animals in this clutch right here. Look at this one right here. This is actually a cinnamon cypress ball python. Oh my gosh, those pewter pin cypresses. Oh my gosh, those things are crazy. Oh, and look at this gorgeous clutch right here. Oh my gosh. This was actually a banana enchi pinstripe and it was bred to a pinstripe. And of course, there's a banana enchi pin right there. Oh my gosh, there's some fortune. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful right here. This is just an enchi banana. I mean, look at how that enchi and banana mix together. Oh my gosh. And then we've got some other just really beautiful banana stuff over here. What's interesting is this is a little enchi right here, which is cool, but doesn't look like we hit anything else enchi this clutch. So we got the one banana enchi and the one banana enchi pinstripe and that was basically it for enchi stuff in that clutch. Nevertheless, beautiful clutch. Lastly, we had a Mojave Calico Bee bred to a Lemon Blast and oh my gosh, look at some of these animals here. Oh my goodness gracious. There's some beautiful snakes right here. This of course right here looks like it would be a Lemon Blast Calico and then just a Pastavi on this side. This looks like just a normal Lemon Blast to me. It's really kind of interesting though, but I don't think that there's anything else in it. But these ones right here, oh my gosh. These are actually killer bees, which is the super pastel spider. It's also a Mojave and it's a calico. Oh my gosh. And it looks like this one right here is actually the killer bee calico without the Mojave gene in it. Oh my gosh, there is some gorgeous animals. So there it is guys. I wanted to give you the quick overview of what we had. Hatch is absolutely amazing. Let's go next door. I'll tell you what's on the project list today, although the project list grows by the minute but uh, let's go over there and check it out so the big plan over at the reptarium today is to hopefully get this waterfall going which comes down from here drains into this pond goes down into that reservoir there and then recycles but basically what I have to do is I have to put a drain in over here run it to the back then run it all the way across the thing so that it gets to the drain tile so that we can basically open a valve and it'll drain out because of course if Lucy or whoever's in here they may use the bathroom in the water and that's gonna be an issue I definitely have my work cut out me because I have to somehow squeeze behind and underneath the cages to run all this stuff. It's definitely going to be a challenge. Uh, I got to get the pump working, but hopefully by the end of the day today, this will be working, which will be awesome because that's well on its way. We've ordered the pumps for this pond, which are going to come in earlier. I thought I thought that was going to be like two weeks. It turns out that that's going to be here within a couple days. So that is really amazing. Also, we put all the glass in all the cages. And with all of the lights on now and all the basking lights and the glass in, I tell you what, it's really changed the way this place looks. I mean, how awesome are these gauges? Again, I love the fact that with this glass in it, it really just kind of finishes off. And then again, all of the lights make these cages look amazing. And as you can see, we're going to probably keep the overhead lights off when the zoo is open. So when you come in, you're just seeing these beautiful cages and the animals themselves. <laughs> I tell you what, I couldn't be more pleased with the way these cages turned out. I mean, take a look at some of these things. I mean, Stewart at Universal Rocks just absolutely killed it with the design on these guys. I mean, look at this. Right here on this ledge, you can see is a great place where this basking light is going to come down. And we've actually heat temp that, which is awesome. It's 110 degrees right there. So we'll definitely put an animal that really likes to bask. But at the same time, it can come down here and it's like 82 degrees. So it's really quite amazing. Again, you can just see the variant. All of these cages right here. Oh my God, I am so happy. Again, just putting the glass in and the lights on has really changed things. Again, you can see the water feature in this cage, which looks absolutely incredible. I mean, take a look at these things. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And then Nova's cage is gonna be right here. Can you imagine Nova the frill dragon up here just climbing all over the place? I'm so excited about it. So Noah, what do you think? I mean, you've been here pretty much every day, which I think is really awesome. I didn't think Noah's gonna be all that excited about it, but you've been here every day, so that's pretty cool. I mean, what, what's your thoughts? I mean, I'm just excited for there to be a zoo here. I mean, see all the cool animals. I don't even know, I don't even think you know what animals are gonna be in all these cages so that's what I'm excited to see. That's awesome and again Noah has actually been vlogging from a completely different perspective than I have so definitely make sure to check his channel I think you would have three videos now that are vlogs about this. Four four videos so as a matter of fact usually a little secret you'll usually catch his videos before <laughs> my videos so if you want the preview of what you're going to see how things are going check out Noah's channel and I'm usually a day behind him regardless it's been great kind of have Noah here Lori here a family thing it's absolutely awesome but definitely go check out what he's done so I've already crawled underneath this cage to basically screw 
this into the drain right there. So right now what I have is basically an elbow that goes down and goes over. So now what I have to do is crawl back underneath the cage and, and put this in there. It's got a little clean out at the end just in case there's ever a problem. And then I have to run this drain pipe all the way down the back side of this wall, all the way over here into an area that has a little drain tile. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be ugly. I'm not gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be dirty, but it's gotta get done. So that's what I'm doing for the next probably hour. Okay, guys, I'm going in. It's not gonna be fun. Tell you what guys, it is super tight in here. It's cramped, it's hot. I'm trying to figure out my measurements because this drain pipe has to definitely drain down so that all the water drains when we hit that release valve. So, oh my gosh. I hope this is gonna work out. I'm definitely a little nervous about this one, I'm not gonna lie. Lori's cutting a little piece off the end there and then they'll be back underneath to try to fit this thing and glue it together. Boy, I hope this works out. All right, so the first pipe is attached. I'm hoping it worked. Lori's gonna feed me another pipe in here and then gonna keep on going. The important thing is, is every 10 foot, I need to be about an inch and a quarter drop so that it drains. Oh my gosh. So that's where I'm at now. I've gotta go all the way down there and through that wall. We're about 30 feet into the, the back of these. Had to come out for a second to get a breath of air. Being that tight, the fumes from all that cement glue and stuff like that. It's pretty miserable, I ain't gonna lie. And I'm just sitting there hoping like this is gonna work because if I have to problem solve this back there, it's gonna be impossible. So that's the other pressure is just like, do it right the first time. Do it right the first time. Don't wanna go back in there to try to fix it. So, okay, back inside. I tell you what guys, this is terrible. I'm like fighting that urge of panic in this tight spot. Oh my God. So I'm officially through the wall here. What I have to do is bend it over here, run it along this wall behind the sink and into that drain right there. And what we'll have is an actual valve like this that will shut it and then we can just open that valve and it'll drain right into this drain tile right there. And hopefully once we have that figured out, I can actually fill the waterfall up, turn it on, hopefully the pump works, hopefully there's no leaks and it all works. Okay, a little more work to do. So I realize this stuff is kind of boring, I get it, you know, but I want to take you guys on the entire journey. Got this all plumbed in, we have a nice kind of downgrade on the level and it comes out and it drains right into here. So with any luck, no leaks, everything will work. I'm going to go ahead and turn the water on, get some water in there. We'll check to make sure that it comes through this way, make sure that there's no leaks and then we'll turn the pump on and see if the waterfall works. And away we go. Water through here, basically drains down through here into here. Hopefully this will fill up and we'll actually drain here and there won't be any leaks. And then we can actually just use that valve to drain everything, close the valve, fill it back up. And uh, I have a feeling if Lucy's in here, she's gonna do a lot of messing up this water down here. And uh, we'll have to see, but let's go ahead and check to see if the drain is actually draining water and then we'll check for leaks. Okay, let's see if we got some water flow. No water flow yet. Oh, there it is. There it is, the flow. Okay, that is fantastic. All right, I'm just gonna run behind, check to make sure there's no leaks in the line. And then uh, if we are, we're gonna go ahead and shut this valve, fill up the bowl, turn the pump on to see if the waterfall works. And the moment of truth. And there it is, guys, the waterfall. What it does, it weeps from up here, drops down here, there's a little fall here and a little spot over here. Again, it's straight down into here, into here, and then the drain works. So far, no leaks. It seems to work completely fine. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. It took me about 45 minutes after I just shot that shot to get it to work right. I couldn't get it done, but it's good now. No leaks, everything looks absolutely perfect. What an amazing cage. This whole project took about five hours between the plumbing and getting everything set, but it is so worth it. What an amazing cage. I mean, just take a look at that. Oh my God, 
I am so excited about this. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to clean up the water, probably run it through four or five times before it stays clean, but can you imagine? Lucy is gonna probably love hanging out in here, climbing up in here, over here, up on this ledge over here. Oh, it's gonna be absolutely incredible. So that was the major job for today. Check one more off the list. I want you guys to all meet Snaz. My friend Rhonda actually came up and donated Snaz to the Reptarium. And you guys know that my first snake ever was a Burmese python. And it was a normal Burmese python, just like Snazzy here. It's such a great thing to have one again. It's been a long time since I've had a normal Burmese python. And they are so gorgeous. I love the albinos and I love all of the mutations. But sometimes a normal Burmese python is just absolutely amazing and it's nostalgic for me because that was my very first day so anyways when you guys come to the reptarium you guys are going to get a chance to meet snaz and sunrise of course what a beautiful animal and it was so nice of ron to come up to not only donate snazzy here but also help us with the build out so there it is guys i wanted to show you that now back to the reptarium to do some more work so back here at the reptarium let me know down in the comments if you guys are getting bored with all the build out and all that stuff i don't know if you guys are excited about it or you're just like, all right, Brian, we've seen you build everything out. Let's just see some animals now. I really want to know from you guys, what do you think? What should I do going forward? We still have probably about a week and a half or two weeks before we actually open. I said it's not going to be on the 14th. Hoping for maybe the 21st. I promise you I will make an announcement for that pretty soon. I just have little things I continue to have to do. But those little things add up to a pretty good amount of time. Every day we're making huge progress. But again, probably in two days we're going to start putting animals in. As a matter of fact, maybe cross my fingers i might put lucy in this tomorrow and then the next day is actually my birthday everybody guess what happy birthday to me brian cusco miguel a few of my other friends like forrest are coming up for a little celebration seeing the reptarium and stuff like that and then we are off to canada for the crbe so it's going to be a really amazing next few days but again animals will be back in the vlog i promise you it's just that i have to really focus on this and i want to know if it's okay for you what have you liked the most what have you disliked tell me what you guys want in the meantime i'm going to go ahead and shut the vlog down and just kind of spend a little time enjoying the fruits of my labor. I hope that you have an absolutely incredible day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. Your support is amazing and like I keep saying, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to fulfill my dreams like the Reptarium, so thank you so much. Do me a couple favors before we get out of here. Can you smash that like button? Turn on those post notifications. Make sure to comment down below. Let me know what's going on in your life. Be kind to someone and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.